Welcome to the addendum, a thing added. On this podcast, Pastor Eric Williams will add to, clarify, and supplement the most recent teachings at Fellowship Renewed Church. All right, hey guys, welcome to uh, this week's addendum. And I uh, just want to take a couple moments here and I'm going to go through some stuff that I talked about on Sunday. Um, or actually, rather, I'm actually going to talk about some things I didn't get to talk about on Sunday. Uh, because I wanted to focus specifically on who the Holy Spirit is, as we talked about, and why it's such a, a big deal that he comes um, after Christ uh, completes his work and returns to the Father. So my goal today is actually to share some content that I had to actually cut out from the first part of what I would have shared on Sunday. Um, but for the sake of clarity, I wanted to save it for a, a separate discussion. So um, we were talking on Sunday in John chapter 15 and John 16, uh, starting in John uh, 15 verse 18. And I make a couple of comments here um, about some of the context surrounding Jesus's statements about the Holy Spirit being the helper. And I think there's some pastoral things that can be shared here. Um, like I say, I wanted to save those for uh, for this discussion. So uh, I'm going to read a, a few verses and then um, we're going to look at a couple things. So starting in verse 18, uh, John writes, and this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. And this is a quote from something he said to them earlier in the book. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. And um, I want us to understand there that uh, the question is, is why would the world respond to the disciples the way that they responded to Jesus, right? And the answer to that is because um, as disciples of Christ, we are supposed to be like Christ, right? And, uh, and it says um, in, uh, in John 13, 16, as I said, that if they hated me, they will hate you, and, and a servant is not greater than his master. Point being there, the reason the world doesn't like Christians is because if we're being faithful, we are being like Christ, and Christ confronted the world, gently, of course, um, but with their sin, right? And so for the believer to look like Christ means that the believer is going to come into conflict with the way that the world operates and the way that the world thinks, the way that the world believes, right? And so I want us to think for a minute um, that if, if we or if someone else who claims to be a believer is loved by the world, then we ought to have some pause or some cause for concern because if we're living faithfully as believers, uh, that is going to have that's going to generate friction between us and the world, right? And that's not to say that we should be intentionally uh, what would be the word unpleasant or intentionally abrasive or that we ought to be unpleasant people to be around in our our temper or our tone or the way in which we speak about things that the world doesn't agree with. Um, but in terms of the lives that we lead and the things we believe about. Uh, who God is and sin uh, and what is right and what is wrong, then in as much as we reflect Christ in those things, the world is not going to like that, right? And so um, we ought to be careful that if the world doesn't have any problem with us or someone who claims to be a believer, that there uh, there's, there's cause for concern there because as we reflect Christ, um, the world would treat us as it treated him, right? And, uh, and that's because, as he says in Matthew 28, we're supposed to teach the world everything that he commanded, right? So we're supposed to take the things that he taught and turn around and, and, and teach them as well, right? So we're supposed to be like him in the world. And as such, we can expect to be treated as he was treated. Um, and a- another thing here that uh, that Jesus says is, um, is verse uh, 3 of chapter 16. And I, I think these are connected, right? So in chapter 16, verse 3, he says, They, the world, will do these things, that is, persecute the disciples, because they have not known the Father nor me, Right? And it's interesting because Jesus lived in the world, and the world knew a lot about Jesus, right? And I alluded to this briefly on Sunday, but there is a very big difference in the scriptures between knowing about someone and having a personal knowledge or a relationship, um, an intimate knowledge of, of who someone is as well, right? So the world had a lot of information about Jesus. He was among them. He lived among them, right? Um, it wasn't as if they didn't know about Jesus as they were persecuting him or as they were uh, even putting him to death. They knew where he was from. They knew exactly what he was teaching. Uh, The difference was they didn't like those things. They didn't have soft hearts towards those things. 
um, they didn't know Christ as believers know Christ, right? Because when the Holy Spirit um, opens our eyes, spiritually speaking, to the realities of who Christ is, um, we don't see him just as another human being with an interesting set of religious teachings. Um, We see him as the divine Son of God, as our Savior. We see him um, as a treasure, as someone that we ought to uh, give our lives up for. Um, we, we see him as who he is in Scripture, not just as uh, information about him that we might have in a head knowledge sense. We actually know Christ, right? But the world knew about him. They just didn't know Christ. And so I think it's a good question for us to ask ourselves um, is when we say that we know Jesus or we believe in Jesus or someone says that to us, um, what, what, do we, what do we mean by that? Do we know about Jesus um, or do we actually know Jesus? Christ, right? Do we treasure him? Do we love him? Have we given our lives to him? Have we asked him for forgiveness for our sins and and surrender our lives to him as uh, sovereign king of the universe, right? Those are very different things. So I want us to think in terms of um, knowing Christ personally and uh, and relationally and not just having information about who he is, right? Which are are very different things. The world had a lot of information about who he is, um, but it did not mean that they they loved him, right? Or truly knew him. And uh, And I also wanted to to ask a question as well, as we think through the things that Jesus is saying to his disciples here, um, he's promising persecution for his disciples, right? But in the spirit of um, thinking through the context of the passage, uh, we need to be careful to make sure that we're asking the question, is what Jesus is saying here just for those disciples, right? Because we know that those disciples faced intense persecution, right? Um, They were uh, were all, in one way or another, martyred or killed for their faith, right? Right. And so what Jesus said clearly applies to the disciples that he was speaking to in that room at that time. But we can ask ourselves as believers who are now 2,000 years removed from that, are the things that Jesus says here about the world persecuting those disciples uh, or persecuting his disciples uh, true for us as well, right? Um, or should we expect something different? And in 2 Timothy 3, 12, Paul writes to Timothy uh, and says, very clearly that all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, right? So it is important for us to realize that Jesus was speaking to those disciples about some specific persecutions that they would face, and they did, but also those same persecutions, that hatred that the world had toward his followers, is something that all who live a faithful life, of course that being a very key word there, um, can expect to face as well. So it looks different, obviously, for us, and it might look in other parts of the world where people are, are, are killed or imprisoned regularly for their faith, But inasmuch as we are faithfully living out our faith in a world that doesn't know or love the Lord, we can expect to be persecuted in some capacity for that, right? And and one other thing to add here in terms of uh, knowing Christ and knowing the Father, right? Jesus says in uh, in verse 23 that uh, they did not not know him or the Father, right? And then in verse 23, he says, whoever hates me hates my Father also. And along the lines of understanding that there's a way of knowing about Christ that is just a, a mental knowledge, but not a relational knowledge um, or a changed heart knowledge towards Christ, there's a way in which I think sometimes people unhelpfully draw a distinction between uh, loving Jesus and loving or believing in God, right? As if they're somehow divisible, right? And and clearly they are not, right? And, and it's very clear in John that, uh, that Christ's mission and the mission of the Father are the same, right? And so for someone to say, well, I'm not real big on God, he seems mean and angry, but I like Jesus, Um, he seems like a nice guy, is a very false distinction that we need to be aware of and reject that, right? Jesus says, if you don't love him, you don't love the Father and vice versa, right? And so I think a lot of times when people say that, they're they're coming um, to the scriptures with a a false understanding of uh, the difference that some people like to point out or, or tried to make between God of the Old Testament, as it were, and, and Jesus of the New Testament. But really, as we understand the scriptures together, it, it, we're, it's not a distinction that we should be making, right? Uh, the mission of Christ and the mission of the Father are the same. And to love Christ is to love the one who sent him. And to love the Father is to know and to love the Son, right? So let's not be trapped um, by thinking that, uh, or enticed into thinking that we can somehow make a distinction or that it's appropriate to make a distinction between love for the Father and love for the Son as if they can be as if they can be separated in, in any way at all, right? Just to kind of recap where we're at on Sunday, in addition to those thoughts I just shared now as additional material, um, just to kind of give the highlight of where we were Sunday as, as one more way to, to uh, help us get, get that in our minds. Um, Jesus talked about how the Holy Spirit was going to come, and the world uh, hated him and his followers, but the Holy Spirit was going to help his followers to bear witness to the world, and the Holy Spirit was going to bear witness to the world as well. And we talked about how he does that by convicting the world of sin, um, of their lack of righteousness, and of their 
uh, wrong judgments. And then we also talked about how significant it is that the Holy Spirit comes because that's the fulfillment of promises that God made long before uh, to bring about an, a time in salvation history when uh, he was going to give his people new hearts, circumcised hearts, and he was going to make his children through the offspring of Abraham, the offspring Christ, into the true offspring of Abraham through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we call that uh, the latter days where we are right now, right? We're in that time period where God has poured out his spirit on uh, believers, and we are blessed with the benefits of having God himself indwell us and give us what we need as believers to be able to live lives that properly honor him and and live out his image in us. So thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Addendum, and we'll see you on Sunday. We're going to talk more about the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives and uh, how we can serve the body through uh, through the gifts that he gives believers. Thank you for joining us on the Addendum Podcast. For more information about Fellowship Renewed Church, visit frcsparta.com. Please join us for next week's episode.